Hills College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Greetings and welcome to all of you. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from two donors. The first, an anonymous donor from Fannie Bay, British Columbia, for a special intention and success for Catholic Come Home. The second, also an anonymous donor from Scarborough, Ontario, in thanksgiving for many blessings received for her children, Ron and Jennifer and their families, for the care and support of her husband and for her niece, Indra, and her family. And some of the family are here with us today, and we welcome them to St. Basil's Church and to this celebration of the Eucharist. We give you thanks for the gift of this telecast. And so we begin, as we should begin all things, in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. You know, we received a lot of gifts in our life, and so often we haven't expressed gratitude by the way that we lived. So we acknowledge our lack of gratitude, we acknowledge our lack of sin, and we ask forgiveness of God and of each other. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. Look with favor, Lord God, on our petitions, and in our trials grant us your compassionate help that consoled by the presence of your Son, whose coming we now await, we may be tainted no longer by the corruption of former ways. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. The word of the Lord.
And the Lord be with you. And with A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. The seventy returned with joy and told Jesus all that they had done. At the same hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows who the Son is except the Father, or who the Father is except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. And then turning to his disciples, Jesus said to them privately, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings desired to see what you see, but didn't see it, and to hear what you hear, but didn't hear it. And this is the gospel of the Lord. I'm pretty sure that the first reading from the prophet Isaiah is quite a familiar text, but often we read it, or perhaps we hear it, as a utopian dream of peace without conflict. The wolf lives with the lamb. The panther lies down with the kid. It sounds comforting, but probably unattainable, according to our own experience. It would take an innocent child or someone with childlike qualities to accept all that's really included in Isaiah's prophecy. But then we hear the words of the gospel. I thank you, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. If we are to be receptive to what has been hidden from the wise, we must somehow regain our childlike wonder and openness to the revelations presented to us each and every day by the Holy Spirit. As we begin Advent, we are once again invited to marvel just as a child, to relive the way that God has worked through history and relieve, relive the incarnation. We're entering into the Christmas season and we pray for the coming of the Lord who is already present in history. You know, it may sound strange to some, but we need to recall that we are constantly preparing for the second coming of Christ. One advent leads to another. And between the two advents lies the time of Christian community, the time when the community is called to witness to and build on justice and righteousness. So we ask ourselves, do we have the eyes and the faith to see the action of God in the events around us? In our age of information overload, we're probably particularly susceptible to the sense that we are the learned and the clever. Childlikeness is disappearing, and yet it's probably the only path to seeing and knowing Jesus, the Son, and through him, God our Creator. Henry Nouwen reminds us that God, who is the creator of the universe, comes to us in smallness, in weakness, in hiddenness. He points out that that's a hopeful message, because many expect loud and impressive events to convince us of God's saving power and presence. But the temptation is to be distracted by them and become blind to Isaiah's prophecy, to the shoot that shall shout, sprout forth from the stump. Now in writes, when I have no eyes for the small signs of God's presence, the smile of a baby, the carefree play of children, the words of encouragement and gestures of love offered by friends, I will always remain tempted to despair. And yet the small child of Bethlehem, the unknown man of Nazareth, the rejected preacher, the naked man on the cross are part of the promise hidden in the shoot mentioned by Isaiah that sprouts from the stump, a shoot that hardly anyone notices. This is a theme which we find frequently in the scriptures. God's revelation often shines forth from the unknown, the small and the most vulnerable in society. Pope Francis continues to teach us and tell us that he wants a church that is poor and for the poor. He tells us that we need not only be in solidarity with the poor, 
but also appreciate the saving power at work in their lives and put them at the center of the church's pilgrim way. He insists that we must be evangelized by them and learn from them for the, from their life and difficulties. They know the suffering Christ. And this entails if appreciating the poor in their goodness, in their experience of life, in their culture, and in their ways of living their faith. He states very clearly, our commitment does not consist exclusively in activities or programs of promotion and assistance. What the Holy Spirit mobilizes is not an unruly activism, but above all, attentiveness, which considers always the other. It's a true concern for the person which inspires us to effectively always seek their good. As the psalmist says, justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. What a better time to ponder peace than during the busy weeks of Advent as we shop, make plans for Christmas, attend parties, try to write letters or cards to long forgotten relatives and friends. But ironically, it sometimes feel that peace is so far away during this frenzied activity. But peace is more than just the absence of conflict. It's an attitude about life. The prophet Isaiah writes that those who trust God are the ones who have peace. We can't keep all the hustle and the bustle out of our lives. We can't avoid daily conflicts and difficulties, but we can give ourselves in trust to God. Each time we feel distress, act unlovingly, succumb to anxious worrying, or get caught up in a whirlwind of activity, we can refocus our inner self. We can turn our hearts toward peace by asking ourselves some questions. What will all this mean after I die? What is the value here and now? What do I need to let go of to be able to entrust everything to God? Peace of mind is simple. Isaiah knew that. It means trusting that God is with us. And this gift is all we really need for our own happiness. During Advent, we are asked to be open to fresh and new beginnings. And I'm going to use some phrases that a buddy of mine, Father Jack Costello, used with us a few years ago. He said, even when it's hard to believe in fresh beginnings, let alone see them, he said, the spirit of Advent is a spirit of wakefulness and waiting, a waiting that is described as a waiting for joy. It's a time of vigilance as we wait for God's coming in our history, a spirit of recognizing our longing and praying with longing. It's a season of renewing hope, hope for that which is given and promised, but not yet fulfilled. Advent is a season to ponder the magnificent images of Isaiah and wonder about the reign of God and what I do to help bring it about. Please join me as we now join in prayer. Every week, many people write in and ask that in this celebration of the Eucharist, we remember their intentions. And so at this time, I want to lift up those many hundreds of people who have written and asked that we remember their intentions and so for all of them and for their intentions we pray to the Lord. We sincerely pray for peace especially for peace in those conflicted areas of our world that justice will reign in those in those nations but we also pray for peace in our homes in our hearts and in our neighborhoods and that God will grant us that peace to all of us we pray to the Lord. We pray for many people who join us via television in nursing homes and hospitals that they may know the peace of God at this moment in their lives. For all of them, we pray to the Lord. Lord and all of this we ask through Christ our Lord. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Amen. 
And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. And pray, my brothers and sisters, that this sacrifice, mine and yours, may become acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It it's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the loneliness of human flesh and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and open for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. And make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, and the entire church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And faithful to our Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, my peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us offer to each other then a sign of that peace. of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those of you at home, join with me now in this prayer for peace by Pope Pius XII. Almighty and eternal God, may our grace enkindle in all of us a love for the many unfortunate people whom poverty and misery reduce to a condition of life unworthy of human beings. Arouse in the hearts of those who call you Father a hunger and thirst for justice and peace and for fraternal charity in deeds and in truth. Grant, O Lord, peace in our days, peace to souls, peace to families, peace to our country, and peace among nations. Amen. Let us pray. Replenish by the food of spiritual nourishment we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us go in the peace of Christ, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Amen.
and have a good day. Our thanks to our two donors for the gift of this Mass. Our prayer book costs $10. If you'd like to order it, please send a check or money order payable to the NCBC and mail it to the NCBC, 21 Dunlop Street, Suite 100, Richmond Hill, Ontario, L4C 2M6.